Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is another button shy game called Ancient Realm by Stephen Aramini and it plays one player. It takes about 10 minutes to play and it's for ages 13 and up. And this is Ancient Realm. Ancient Realm is basically a solo slash solitaire style game where you're going to be getting three different types of resources, wood, wheat, and rock. And you're also going to be receiving coins. At the very beginning of the game, you're going to be utilizing your coins and your resources to build wonders and districts. Uh, districts will allow you to put out things like mines and princes and kings and such, as well as the common citizen and forests and plains and all that good stuff. And then the wonders are going to let you place not only different types of forests and fields, but also the great wonders like the Great Pyramid or the Hanging Gardens. On your turn, you're going to be selecting one of the cards here by either selecting the districts and just placing them up here in your building area or paying for one of the wonders and placing them up here or if you want, removing them and gaining resources for them. Up to the point where both decks are emptied. You're gonna be activating different zones and locations as you progressively put more cards into play and paying their costs and receiving their benefits. When all the cards are gone, you'll tally up your victory points on all the pyramids and all your mines and any other way you possibly score points and you'll check to see how well you've done. You'll go into this rule book here, you'll look for the scoring chart and see if you're either a ruinous player, an adequate, respectable, Noble, Variant, or perhaps even Legendary. Let's say I set the game up, how to play in my review. And so as you might have guessed, this is an 18 card card game by Button Shy, and because of that there are seven cards here and seven cards here. You have the District deck and then you have the Wonder deck. Shuffle them up, place them on the left or right hand side, and then deal two cards out into a row forming this long column here. Give yourself the resource cards, which is your stone, wood, and wheat, and of course your money. You'll start with three money, one wheat, one rock, and one wood. And then make sure that there's enough play area in front of you where you'll be placing down the buildings as you continually build up your specific ancient realm. And that's that's the setup. Go ahead and put the little wallet back in your pocket and maybe the rule book with it. In Ancient Realm, there are two main actions you'll be doing. Action one, or your turn basically, is going to be to play one of these cards out here. And action two is you can abandon an unbuilt wonder to gain a resource of your choice or two coins. Uh, coins can also be spent for resources, so at a 2 to 1 ratio you can get, for instance, 2 coins for a wheat, rock, or a wood, but not the other way around. And like I said, when you discard a wonder, you can gain 2 coins or any one resource, which is basically the same value. You're going to have your two different district cards out and your two different wonders and then the decks adjacent to them. On the left hand side your district deck is going to have a card face down with a specific unique power. In this case here it says whenever you build a wonder you gain two coins. And over here on the wonder it's always going to be the same. Discard a wonder to gain a resource. Uh, and basically you're going to choose. Do you want to play a district card out? You can literally just simply take one of the district cards and put it out in the top here. Um, or you could choose to play out a wonder. In order to play out a wonder, you must meet the requirements. The requirements are a resource cost in the brown area on the wonder card. Now, all of these cards have a brown area, and that card, that area is the cost of that specific card when you activate it. The only difference is the wonders. The wonders are actually what it costs to play the card out into your field here. So this wonder, the Great Pyramids, is going to cost two wood, three rock, and two wheat. And then when you afford that, when you pay for it, you can put it out. But normally you're going to start by probably playing a district card. You'll take something like this Bishop Mine Collector card and you'll put it out on the field and then you'll replace it with a new card from the district deck. After you have done that, then you'll rinse and repeat. Play out another card or choose to discard a or abandon an unbuilt wonder and gain a resource. When you play new cards, you'll have a certain rule as to how you can place them. For instance, if I wanted to play out this Quarry Woodsman Mine card, I could take it out and I could place it adjacent on the right or left hand side of this card here. But what I can also do is I can cover up blocks on the card that I just recently played out, whether it be one, two, or three. As long as you make sure the whole thing gets cut, as long as you make sure that each block gets covered by another block, you can do this because you're always gonna have one line here. And how it'll work is you'll take your card, and let's say that I wanted to cover up this mine, and let's say I wanted to cover up this bishop, I could go ahead and place this card right on top, signifying that I am going to cover those two. I'll pay the costs, the bishop says I have to pay a coin, and the mine is basically free, and then I'll go ahead and take this card and cover over it all the way, 
but just before I do so, I'll check to see the benefits that I gain. And in this case, the mine is gonna give me two gold coins. So from three, I'll go to two, and then from two, I will go to four. Every resource has a total uh, high of seven. If you ever get more than that, you're staying at seven. That's the resource cap. And sometimes when you activate a card, like activating this bishop, it'll give you one resource uh, for each of the different types of, uh, looks like to have the different types of civilians on your field. Now things on your field are only the cards that are in the line. If the card is coming down, it's technically not in your specific realm yet. So like the Woodsman here, it's actually not a card that's going to uh, be affected until after it goes down. And then, then it's activatable and it also counts as part of your tableau. And after you've done that, you'll simply take out another one of these guys and place it out. Now it's time maybe for me to play a Wonder. Um, and I need to gain resources in order to do that. I don't have enough yet, I don't think. But I could spend resources, uh, my coins, for resources. So I could spend four to gain two new resources. Now one thing left to do is to gain a forest, which once again, I could go ahead and take this card and cover over it. Remember, you can choose what activations you want. That will give me two coins, and then it will also make me spend a coin for a wood. Ah, finally now, after much deliberation and, and, and painful exuberance, I'm now able to craft my Great Pyramids. I can take this card out, I can place it on any side or on the top anywhere, and if I place it on the side, I don't activate anything, but I'll spend all the resources in order to do so. And now the Great Pyramids say that whenever I build another wonder, I'll gain a resource of my choice or two coins. It also is gonna give me 10 points at the end of the game for each, each of the different types of citizens or civilians that I have. Eventually these decks are going to run out and when they do you'll just play with whatever is left until there is nothing left on the field In which case you'll score the top area where you've been building from left to right and then you'll see how many points you have Whoever had or how many points you have will determine how well you did on the back of this rule book here There is a ranking system the best you can do is 70 plus and the worst is 0 to 49 And that's basically the game ancient realm. It's a little bit of a complex tableau management game where you have two different types of selections and never forget to check these little cards out on the top value to see if you gain any benefits. Uh, and yeah, it's a pretty straightforward type of little tableau game. Ancient Realm is all about taking the resources that you have and resources you can gain from district cards, earning more, utilizing them to build wonders, and all at the same time attempting to create the best realm possible for scoring points. There are a variety of different minds that will score you points based on, for instance, you'll gain two points for every single wonder you have that's adjacent to another wonder when you have this mine out, or five points if you have more civilians than you have royalty. Or maybe you're building lots of wonders, in which case you'll gain either five points, nine points, or a combination of high points based on how you position your realm. Uh, there are a very select few cards that are going to actually score you, um, or select few positions of cards that will score you points in your specific district deck. Each card has a way of scoring you points, and they'll score you in different ways, whether it be two points for every noble, or points for every wonder adjacent to this specific mine, or maybe it's going to give you a point for every single wonder you have just in general. Now, covering these cards up, basically activating them, will give you gold but you will lose out on the victory points they provide at the end of the game. So you have to be aware of that. Also, covering up characters like the king or the queen or the researcher or treasurer, these are going to give you bonuses, preferably powerful ones, at the cost of losing potential points you can gain at the end of when the game is like completed. When you're checking to see what you have here, if you don't have certain cards because uh, your wonder requires them, you'll lose points on that. Wonders uh, are generally uh, have a varying degree of costs, but most of them are fairly expensive. I think probably the cheapest ones you can get are a cost of four, maybe like two stone and two raw, uh, two stone and two wood, or maybe uh, two wood and two wheat. But they go up in value from there, and they're worth a boatload of points. Some of them have a benefit, like it's eight points for the Colossus, plus you get an extra point for every royalty you have in your tableau, and it goes on from there. And these cards are all basically just wonders plus a unique area that can give you resources by paying a coin. Most everything requires you to pay coins, but there are cards that reduce the cost of other cards that make you pay coins. So if you have this specific wonder out, now it's free whenever you place a card to activate over uh, a royal. Right, or mass civilian. And so there's ways to combo with this game. Uh, you're also kind of manipulating your ability to trade coins for resources, but not the other way around. So making sure you make the right trades with money when you have uh, money, as well as 
there was the treasurer. The treasurer is cool too because he can double the value of your money, but you have to make sure you have a certain amount of money because seven is the max, maybe three or maybe four is better to utilize the treasurer at that point. So certain times, based on what tableau that you have available to you is gonna determine what type of resources that you should place inside the tableau. Or what type of scoring method you're going for based on what is available to you here in the main board. Because the main board kind of directs you as to where you're gonna be taking your cards and how you place them. You cannot have the same strategy every game because you're not going to have the same strategy available to you, which will help you learn to score points based on what is um, able to be scored and how you can best utilize the cards you have by placing blocks over blocks to create your tableau. Artwork is beautiful in this game. It's simple, it's elegant, it's straightforward. It's a solitaire style game that fits inside your pocket, which is always great with button shy games. And it's really, really solid. It has a smooth uh, feeling to the game. Now, it kind of reminds me like most style, button style type, or button shy style type games, um, which is of course not a bad thing. It's one of the games I really enjoy and probably one of the, the, the few solitaire style, like these the so company that makes really, really good solitaire style games. It's, it's short and elegant, sweet, strategic, and it's easy easy to teach and very easy to set up. Once you've actually taken out everything and placed it all out and you're done, take all the cards together, put wonders on one side and put the um, other cards on the other, shuffle the deck, or you don't even probably need to because it's already shuffled at that point, and just once again flip two over and play again. Three coins and one of each resource. Yeah, it's it's really good. I love games that use just it's it's just like elegant and small, but they use all of the cards to a varying degree, which allows for a ton of complexity. And this game does a great job of that. This is one of their newer games, um, Ancient Realm, and I'll have another review for the next game tomorrow. But this one here is a solid experience for a solitaire game. You probably won't like this game if you have a specific style that you always want to go for in a game. You're like, I'm playing this type of game and I like to do this type of strategy. This game is gonna kind of take you out of that comfort zone and make you kind of try different things um, that will allow you to hopefully score more points. Sometimes maybe the best combinations of cards might not be available to you for whatever it is you like to do. And it's a, definitely a deep thinker. It's also a solo game, so if you're looking for a social game, this is not it for you. But for those of you who enjoy a deep strategy thinking solo game with a minimal style to it, then definitely check out Ancient Realm. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Ancient Realm. Currently it's available for pre-order on Button Shy Games website. There's a link down below in the description. If you'd like, if you've seen more than one of our videos here or a live stream perhaps, and you think we've earned your subscription, you go ahead and push that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you'd like, of course, watching our live stream, streams, speaking of our live streams, if you haven't seen them, maybe 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, where we play games just like this one here. And the last one we played was uh, the, the, the new type of Everdell game, Far Shore, which was this last Sunday. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to visiting the ancient realm with you next time.